Immediately after independence in 1963, there was a need to have a single education system away from the stratified pre-independence when in which there was an African education, European and Asian. So the 7423 system or A-level was birthed lasting 21 years, followed by the 844 which has lasted 32 years being replaced by the competence-based curriculum. Judith Akolo takes you through the three transitions and what to expect going forward with the CBC or the 26333 system of education introduced in 2017. The Omide Commission of 1964 came up with the 7423 system of education with the aim of creating a single nation that reflected the nation's sovereignty away from the stratified system that had African education, Asian and European. However, by 1970, there were jitters over the lack of capacity and flexibility for the 7423 to respond to the changing aspirations of the labor market needs due to the lack of new skills, technologies, and general attitude towards work. The system was seen as too academic, yet the rate of unemployment was rising year after year. The notion that education was the main medium for social mobility and national economic development began to fade away. Calls for a change in the education system culminated in the Mackay Commission report of 1982, which saw the introduction of the 844 system of education in 1985. The new system was seen as the panacea to the unemployment debacle as it would equip learners with employable skills ending up in either self-employment or secure employment in the informal sector. It recommended more science streams in schools, mathematics, as well as technical and vocational subjects in order to have more learners get skilled. 844 started meeting resistance immediately after introduction as it was thought to be broad, expensive, and burdensome. The Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development Evaluation came up with a damning report that seems to have sounded the death knell on the 844 system. The report indicated that the 844 system was examination-oriented, put more emphasis on content coverage, lacked special needs curriculum, ICT infrastructure, and career guidance. The system could not train employable people as had been envisaged. One of the biggest accusations of 844 is that uh, uh, children come out, it's a, it's a wasteful system. It is not the education system, it is the economy of the country. The Ominde and Mackay systems were set aside and in came the Professor Dominic Odiambo Task Force report that sought to realign the education sector to the Constitution of Kenya 2010. The 2633 education system aims to enable learners to be globally competitive as well as ensure quality education for sustainable development. The competence-based curriculum, CBC, puts emphasis on core competencies, communication and collaboration, self-efficacy, critical thinking and problem solving, creativity and imagination, citizenship, digital literacy and learning to learn geared towards helping learners become engaged, empowered, ethical citizens so as to thrive in a fast-paced 21st century world by solving real-life issues. Renowned educationist and vice-chancellor of Daystar University, Professor Laban Airo, explains the findings of a report of a task force he chaired on CBC. Primary education cannot give you a carpenter. Yeah, and I'm being a little blunt. Yeah, even a secondary education. When I was at high school, my colleagues went to technical institutes. They did not come out as electricians or carpenters. No, they had an introduction so that then the Tivet institutions would take over. And we have this 
misconceived idea that CBC is supposed to give us functional citizens. It can't. It cannot. First of all, just the age itself wouldn't allow that kid to apply themselves to become a carpenter, a plumber, or an electrician. Considering the teething challenges that many parents have had to go through in finding schools for their grade 7 children, Professor Airo offers. Rolling out CBC in the first four grades was going to cost this country 360 billion Kenya shillings. And uh, what was our driving thrust? That there must be equity. And this is something Kenyans must be very sensitive to. Equity. I don't want to talk about parity, but equity. Because a child in Igunga Primary School in Vihiga, a child in Tana River, a child way up in Wajir, a child in Kapinguria must be exposed to the same quality of education and instruction. That is what defines us as a nation. The current infrastructure challenges notwithstanding, it could be a tall order for the government. But also we must remember what the value of theory is very, very critical in, 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 in the formation of the learning mind. Yeah. The quest for a suitable education system for Kenya remains elusive, yet education is an insurance for social mobility and a reservoir of knowledge and human resource. Teachers were not trained in CBC. These kids were, are amorphous. They are neither CBC nor 844. But the teachers just taught these, teachers, these kids just the way they taught 844. I don't think these kids are more practical oriented than the other kids who are in class eight today. They're not. So it's possible um, reinforcing things. Which way, Kenya? Judith Akolo, Lunchtime News.